Hey guys, I'm back for another video, and welcome to another Hypixel Skyblock tutorial. And today, I'm here to show you guys a few tips that I found when playing this game. And I know I've done a video like this before, but since then, I've gathered seven different details about this game that you might not have known. And I'm going to show you guys why you should know about it, and how you can take advantage of it. So let's go. So the first suggestion is actually, it probably is going to be temporary, and that is the explosive bow. So for a while this was considered one of the most useless items in the game. It's a weak bow. It doesn't really have that much strength compared to something like a Runan's. If you compare 180 damage with hot potato books versus 120, 47 strength versus 80, but where this bow shines is with a little ability that adds an explosion around the radius of the spot that you hit with your arrow. So let's go full talisman spam here and get a few potions. I'm going to grab a critical pot and then I'm going to go in here. Archery. With these two potions, along with my talisman spam as well as a 3 fourth strong and uh, tarantula helmet setup, I should be able to do a decent amount of damage using this bow. And you're probably like, what are you doing in the end right now? You know, you can't hit, you can't hit an enderman with a bow. I mean, everybody knows that. You just go, hmm. Just bounces off, they teleport, doesn't work. But, the explosive bow has a unique ability that forms an explosion around the spot where you hit. And using this ability, you can one-tab zealots, but I need a little bit more damage. Okay, I grabbed a spirit potion. Ignore that. <laughs> anyway, there we go. So, as you can see, zealots die in one hit to the explosive bow if you have high enough stats and enough potions. Now, 99% of players that have an explosive bow are not going to be able to do this, which is why sword swapping is a thing. So, for example, if I swap out my boots, I probably won't be able to one-tap a zealot. See? But, I can counteract that by doing this. So, sword swapping, basically, uh, it will use the stats for your sword when the arrow lands, and that allows you to one-tap. But, I have enough stats that I should be able to just one-tap a zealot without sword swapping, which makes this way faster. But anyway, the reason why this is useful is that this can get you summoning eyes. So, explosive bow. The way it works is if you get a kill with this weapon, then if a special zealot spawns, which is again like a 1 in 420 chance, then it will spawn a special zealot right on top of you. Uh, and it's recommended to, you know, sit up on, say, the spire. So if I go up here, I bet you there's going to be somebody up here. So there's already people up here doing the same strat. You could sit up here, shoot at anything you like. Obviously, zealots are preferred. There's going to be a lot of competition up here. This is another good spot. There's a lot of good spawns. You kind of get used to the spawning locations after a while. Like, a couple of them spawn over here. There you go. One of them spawns over there. So yeah, this is a good way to get summoning eyes if you can't get like 400% speed. So yeah, that's the first strat you might not have known about. The second tip is taking advantage of an item that was released in the winter of 2019, and that is skill XP boost potions. These are a rare drop from the gifts that you get during the winter event. As you can see, I have a whole bunch of them. I'm mostly interested in tier 3, so we got a forging one here. Um, in the other chest, I have them organized. I got some combat ones, foraging, alchemy, enchanting, mining, fishing. So these are useful because of a little trick with minions. As you can see, I have 23 clay tier 11 minions with enchanted lava buckets, diamond spreading, budget hoppers, and super compactor 3000s. Very expensive setup, but it makes me about 1.3 million coins a day. Just, you know for being here it's pretty cool but uh, there's a little game mechanic that can be exploited to give us more than coins when we collect from the minions so these xp skill boost potions actually apply to minion drops so if you look here if i collect 16 clay 
you will see that I gained some fishing XP. It doesn't look like a lot, it only says 1.6, but that's because it did 1.6 per clay. So, if I were to collect, say, enchanted clay, it'd give me a lot more. Uh, but anyway, let's say I let these minions sit for a week, right? I get like seven days worth of drops. That's a lot of enchanted clay. And if I were to then drink this XP boost potion, which I'm not going to do because it's a waste, and then I collect all the minions, I will actually get a 20% boost in my fishing XP. Now, that's useful because having nothing but tier 11 clay minions will get your fishing up really, really fast. If you look in my skills here, my fishing is at 21, and I barely did any fishing, like, at all. And it's because of clay minions. So, I would recommend, with your minions, try and hold back from collecting them until the storages are near full. With super compactors, could take a week, could take two weeks, depends on the minion, it could take a month. So, I would recommend using these XP boost potions along with minions. Also, this effect works on diamond spreading, so also get yourself a mining XP boost potion because that will help with diamond spreading and this is actually a really great way to level up skills in general so like for example you get the normal ways to level up skills right you have uh, leveling up farming by you know breaking sugarcane or uh, pumpkins and in order to you know level up enchanting you would just spam grand XP bottles until you hit XP 40 enchant a book with 40 levels repeat that's the fastest way to do that Alchemy XP, you've got your uh, enchanted sugar cane, which I actually, I prepared 16 enchanted sugar cane to do that on stream today. And then you have getting a friend of pearl spam and killing zealots quickly for combat XP. Uh, quartz minions with lapis set and a pickaxe with XP and fortune uh, for mining XP. But there's a couple skills that are really tough to level up and one of them is fishing, uh, which is why clay minions are awesome. So, that's a great way to level up your fishing. And foraging, I haven't tried it yet, but I would imagine if you had 11, or no, if you had 23 tier 11 oak minions, and then you let them AFK for, like, two weeks, and then you got, like, say, a foraging XP boost potion, you would get a lot of foraging XP, I would imagine. So, yeah, I would say take advantage of this strat with all your minions. Uh, try and hold back from collecting them every morning like I did. Just leave them until their storage is a full. Collect them all at once with an XP boost pot. Oh, and another thing is if you really want to amp things up, you can also replace an enchanted lava bucket with catalysts. Uh, as you would know, that's three times the drop. So with a clay minion, oh boy, <laughs> you can level up your fishing real quick. If you had like 23 tier 11 clay minions with catalysts going for two weeks, it's a lot of catalysts, but you'd probably be able to get like a couple million fishing XP in a few weeks without even fishing. Another detail you might not have known is that another item from the winter event, the bottle of gyre, or jur, I'm not quite sure how to pronounce it yet. This item provides a boost to your intelligence. The longer it stays in your inventory, the more intelligence you get. So kind of useless. I don't really see a practical reason for it for its intended purpose, which is, you know, an intelligence buff, because it has to stay in your inventory all the time. But there's a little detail that no one really talks about, and it's that as the intelligence boost goes up, so does the sell price at an NPC. I'm gonna put a screenshot up right now from uh, actually a friend of mine, Akinsoft. He's had one of these in his inventory for like a month now, and he's gonna sell it for a lot of money. Now, if you AFK a lot, you can have your inventory full of bottles of gyre, like 27 of them. And theoretically, you can make like, you can make like a couple million coins a week just AFKing with bottles of gyre in your inventory. And then of course you could sell it at the NPC. But anyway, yeah, the price scales to quite a bit. You can get literally hundreds of thousands of coins per bottle, but you have to sacrifice an inventory slot to have it. So this is another thing about the winter event. So also, in addition to all this other stuff they added, I would recommend you guys collect snow minions right now because there's a strategy out there that makes more money than clay tier 11 minions, which is widely regarded as the best offline resource gathering method of getting money. Obviously, you can, you know, AFK and use, say, a vamp mask with tarantula minions or use a cactus grinder with magma cream but if you can't afk clay is the obvious choice for making money but snow has the potential to be better 
Snow minions have actually the shortest action time of any minion in the game. As you can see with my snow minion tier 11, the time between actions is 6.5 seconds. And if you compare that to something like clay, it's nearly double that, 12.8 seconds. It takes twice as long for a clay minion to either break a block or place a block. Both count as actions. Now, why does this matter? Well, snow minions, are just like any other minion, have two upgrade slots here. What if you put two diamond spreading here and then you put a an enchanted hopper here what would that do well right now it doesn't do anything because um diamond spreading and hoppers don't work together unfortunately admins please fix but um for right now diamonds don't actually get sold in hoppers they just vanish but once that bug is fixed you can get more diamonds from a snow minion than an actual diamond tier 11 minion because of that short action time and as you know diamond spreading provides a chance to get diamonds with whatever you have and the reason why i recommend perfect hopper or not perfect hopper an enchanted hopper is because uh you're going to be generating a lot of snow the minion's going to fill up in literally an hour so you're going to need a hopper and as you guys know enchanted hoppers sell items at 90 percent of their sell price at the npc so those minions tier 11 snow with two diamond spreading and enchanted hopper it would generate I, I think i've already calculated that 24 of them which is unrealistic i know but just for calculation's sake 24 of them would generate something like i think it's 3 million coins a day as opposed to like clay minions getting like say 1.5 million coins a day so once the bug is fixed snow minions are going to be freaking amazing the investment's going to be insane though because per, um enchanted hoppers cost like 900,000 coins to make so it will take about a week to pay itself back but anyway yeah so i guess collect these guys upgrade them tier 11 hope that the admins fix diamond spreading get some iron for enchanted hoppers prepare <laughs> because the new minion arms race is coming another thing you didn't know about this game probably is unless you saw the video for it anvil use resetting so i actually provided a tutorial in a previous video where you're able to reset the anvil uses on a book uh if you don't know what an anvil use is it's you know self-explanatory if you were to take a book combine it with another book the one that results has one anvil use combine it with another book you get two anvil uses so on and so forth but there's a way to reset the anvil uses and this is important because anvil uses dictates how expensive an enchant will be so using my anvil reset uh method you can actually produce a one anvil use maxed out weapon right now i have a one anvil use spicy reaper falchion with every enchantment in the game that you know reaper falchion needs is missing a couple ones that you know work on other mobs but anyway one anvil use weapons and armor are extremely valuable because when an update comes out new enchants are added it gives you a chance to you know add an anvil use without spending 300 levels anyways all the visuals on screen hopefully explained what i'm talking about a little bit better but uh you should definitely watch that video because it will help you get one anvil use weapons it'll help you combine books together to make a literal god book for cheap and the last thing that you didn't know about hypixel skyblock is a short rant about farming so a lot of people still in 2020 after all this time think that melons are the superior farming method that is false I would argue that other than cactus, melon's actually one of the worst things you could possibly farm in this game. Well, actually, to be fair, you're not going to have a great time with wheat, potatoes, carrots. But in terms of the good crops, melon's the least good. So as you can see, I have four full width layers of pumpkin and one full width layer of sugarcane. Let's compare to pumpkins first. When you compare pumpkins to melons, right? You would think, hey, it's the same thing, except it just produces a different block, right? You go like this, collect a whole bunch of stuff. You know, you wiggle your mouse a little bit to get the collection. You sell the drops at the NPC, and you're done. Now, here's the reason why pumpkins are better. In order to collect pumpkins, what you need is an Efficiency 5 Golden Axe with Telekinesis on it. Um, you break all the pumpkins, combine them to Enchanted. If you want, combine them into Farmer Boots sell it on the ah make profit or 
so to the NPC, I would actually recommend the NPC. The auction house is kind of flooded with pumpkins right now. But anyway, it makes you a pretty nice profit, you know? If you go and try and sell melons, here's the problem. Back at the farm, you're going to need an efficiency 5 gold and axe with uh, telekinesis and silk touch. Now, that doesn't sound bad. But why would you need silk touch? Well, let's say I break a row of melon. My inventory is going to literally fill up in a second. So I would have to then craft, which takes about double the time to harvest. Uh, then I'd have to do another row. Combine. Another row. Combine. And, you know, with pumpkins, you can do like five, six layers or five, six rows before you have to craft everything together. What I'm trying to say is that it's not practical to farm melons without silk touch because your inventory fills way too fast and you waste so much time crafting. Uh, anyway. If you use Silk Touch, you don't get farming XP from uh, melons. So, and if you didn't know, as your farming level increases, I would know this because I'm a farm. I'm a farming level 36 right now. You actually get a chance for double and triple drops right now. As I'm farming 36, I get almost a 50% chance to get triple drops. Now that's useful. Let's say I get 2.5 pumpkins per break, right? So if I went to the NPC and I tried to sell one melon, it'd cost nine coins, or it'd give me nine coins. If I try to sell a pumpkin, it'd give me four coins. So that's not that great, right? Because a pumpkin is worth less than half the uh, amount of a melon. Well, because of my 36 farming, this, the melon, since you don't get farming XP, you also don't get double or triple drops. You're guaranteed one melon per break. So nine coins forever no matter what your farming level is and you can't even increase it anyway pumpkin i got all the way to 36 farming so on average i get 2.5 pumpkins per pumpkin which means i would get 10 coins per pumpkin break because you know four times 2.5 10 right so i'd actually get i get more coins from selling pumpkins than selling melons pumpkins are great but sugar cane actually makes way more. So right now the prices are super inflated for enchanted sugar cane because people are trying to level up alchemy. I've seen them go for 100 to 200,000 coins per. So I'm holding about 1.6 to 3 or yeah, 1.6 to 3.2 million coins worth of sugar cane right here and it took me like 2 hours to almost 3 hours to get it. And like one harvest of this got me about five enchanted sugar cane. Took about 20 minutes. Oh no, not 20 minutes. More like a half an hour, maybe 40 minutes maximum. But yeah, you can harvest sugar cane pretty dang quickly. Uh, for example, if I went down here, I'm actually too fast. Um, I would recommend three fourths young set and spirit mask to get the maximum speed that you can get without going too fast for har harvesting this. But anyway. Uh, collecting the sugar cane like that, you know, also gives you farming XP and it sells for a ton on the auction house and you can use it on yourself. Uh, one enchanted sugar cane in a brewing stand gives you about 45,000 alchemy XP. Very nice. Makes all your potions last longer. Gives you more intelligence. That's why pumpkin and sugar cane are both way better options uh, than melon. Melon's actually laughable as a crop because it literally doesn't give you XP and you don't experience the double drop benefit. Uh, even if it's worth more money, you know, in the short term, in the long term, these will be much more profitable for you. Well, anyway, that's it for the, uh, seven things that you didn't know about Hypixel Skyblock. I hope you enjoyed the video. It was fun to make. It's kind of, uh, hard to find things like this in Hypixel Skyblock because there's so many YouTubers like me just going and exposing everything. But, um, yeah, I hope I taught you something. And if I did, make sure to subscribe. I post a lot of content like this, Hypixel Skyblock. I mean, it's pretty great. On average, like, one of my viewers watches, like, six videos per month, which is insane, by the way. So if this is one of the six videos for you, hello. I'm glad you enjoy the content. But if this is your first time watching my channel, give my Let's Play a try. Solo Hypixel Skyblock. I'm one of the few YouTubers that actually doesn't take any gifts. I, um, any extra coins given to me in the auction house, I actually give away. So that's a thing. Well, anyway... <laughs> Um, I guess that's it. So, I hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you guys later.